all right guys assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh so today we are gonna wrap up the story the cancer story i want to apologize the last video i put my camera directly under the sun i knew what i was doing and i knew it was not gonna work in the end but i thought i was gonna finish the the video in good time before my camera overheat so I, I really want to apologize for that but there was no much information that was left from that story so i'm gonna finish in this video and i hope this video is gonna be less than 10 minutes i am also testing out the new mic you remember the mic i unboxed with you guys so tell me on your end how does it sound does it sound better or the camera the inbuilt uh, sound from the camera or the inbuilt mic from the camera is better than the external camera so yeah guys i think we left where i was explaining to you guys i went for radiotherapy so I was going for radiotherapy and I told you guys I had like five sessions for four weeks. So that's like 20 sessions. So each session was, I think, 20,000 if I'm not wrong. So again, I told you guys I made sure the insurance was working. I was fighting them day and night. I remembered later when I was editing the name of the insurance. I think it's UAP insurance. So they came through for me though. So because nobody has 20,000 every day in their hands. So Alhamdulillah, I, I tried uh, to fight them every day because sometimes they will delay the payments and I have to wait for them to accept or to agree for me to be treated. So the radiotherapy was just easy. It wasn't something uh, difficult. You just go through the machine and then for I think for like five minutes or so and then that's it. So I think the, the machine burns whatever is left from the surgery. I don't know if it does it completely. I, I don't know. And so that was it because I just go like for, I think, five minutes, I come out. But the side effect, one of the main side effects was fatigue. I was really exhausted. Like I've never, have you ever been exhausted and you don't even do much in your life? Like I wake up in the morning and I'm tired. But Alhamdulillah, I was looking at the positive side. Why? Because this is why I said uh, Allah loves me. And I keep saying Allah loves me. Because every time I went to the hospital, the cancer center, I will see a lot of, not even a lot, almost everybody had their family there and almost everybody was in a bad state. Almost everyone. People were being wheeled into the radiotherapy and chemotherapy uh, like, like rooms. While I was voluntarily walking, alhamdulillah, and I remember every time I would walk to the hospital, the doctors were like, where is your family? Because every, everyone was coming with family, either their brothers or their sisters or their parents or their kids. Me, I was just walking in like, I don't need nobody. I got God. Why do I need people? <laughs> Oh, which is true, it's a nice attitude to have, you know, that's how, you know, because I, I was like, I was telling the doctors, listen, me, I'm not alone, I'm with, I'm with Allah, so uh, I can walk in, As Alhamdulillah, first of all, can I walk to the hospital? Yes, that's all that, you know, that is more important, the rest, I can manage, so I will go for radiotherapy, if I feel so tired that I cannot go back home, I will actually sleep, I will rest on the benches, like uh, where the reception is, there's like a sofa thing, I just rest there, I sleep for like a few minutes, then I go home. So yeah, the, doctor, the doctors will always remind me like, oh, you're very brave, you're very courageous. And then my attitude, every time I'll go to the hospital, I wasn't sad. I was happy. In fact, I remember every time I'll go to the hospital, I will dress so nicely. I used to have like a fashion brand at that time. So I, I used to make my own outfits. So I will make some for myself. And I used to be yeah, looking hot like a piece of snack. I was, it's not like I was even going for radiotherapy. I was going to actually say hi to the, you know, the, the doctors. And surprisingly, it's not even a surprise, honestly. Allah loves me. All the doctors were so nice to me, like the nurses, the, the oncologists, everyone was so was super nice, like really nice. I know it's a business, the hospitals are business in Kenya, but you can see the true like humanity in them. You can see how, you know, like you can tell from someone's energy if they're all about money or really they care about your situation. So all the doctors were really nice to me. Doctor, I remember there was another doctor, very, that doctor was beautiful. I was like, Dr. you look so pretty. Oh my God, every time I see her, I'm like, I'm amazed. And she looked young, but she was old. But you know, like, she, she was probably in her 40s, but she was so beautiful. Her name is Dr. Waweru. I really hope she doesn't watch my YouTube videos. <laughs> she was really nice and very sweet. Every time I'll come to the hospital, she'll be like, oh, you look very nice. I like your outfit. I'm like, you girl, I look nice. I know. <laughs> I sell this, you know. Thank you so much. So I used to make like modesty outfits. So yeah, the radiotherapy was, sometimes I remember I would cry in the, in, the, in the toilet because it was overwhelming for me. So those times I was, I, was, I never used to cry. Now I cry every day if I want to, I cry any time. But those times I was still in that era of, oh, I'm a strong girl, yada, yada. Now I'm not strong, excuse me. I will cry even on the streets. I don't care. Sometimes I even cry in the metro when I remember Allah's blessings. Like the other day, I remember, I don't know, I was so overwhelmed with emotions, like how I was feeling, like how, how Allah has blessed me. I started crying in the metro, in the tram. <laughs> but 
because nobody asked me why are you crying anyway so i can cry if i want to so the, there's a, there was a guy who sat opposite me he looked at me literally i was i was crying but not really like crying like uh, like with noise just teary because i was overwhelmed but then those times i was like i cannot cry in front of people you know i have to go and hide myself and cry in the bathroom so i'll go in the bathroom i will cry because i was alone literally i was alone i mean physically i was alone because i didn't have family yes but i knew allah was there for me so i would just cry and because i'm a human being you know i'm overwhelmed sometimes i was tired i was exhausted but i was always reminding myself to look on the positive side why because i'm blessed i can walk to the hospital the people who don't even know how much time they got you know in the hospital they were going through you know chemotherapy being fed they were going through so much it was just sad so i always reminded myself of the blessing at that particular moment i had and alhamdulillah that was all you know in allah's mercy and every time i actually pray to allah i always ask allah to you know to have mercy on me whether i'm alive like you know like even when i'm healthy i'm going about my business so yeah that was um the radiotherapy after the radiotherapy i went back again to the hospital i talked to the doctor the doctors no now we were checking like what is the they were telling me i don't know they wanted to like they were giving me now like the, the final details or like oh you know your tumor was very small um we didn't have to take you through chemotherapy alhamdulillah and you don't need to do anything else like um how do i say it? He, she said i remember dr who said like the chances of it coming back are very very uh, minimal that's what she said i cannot sit with my crossed legs my like my legs crossed for so long so i have to, i have to change my sitting position anyway so she said that uh, the chances of the like the breast the breast cancer coming back was very minimal and by the way i forgot to mention in my story that actually the cancer was hormonal breast cancer so now when i remember when i used to break the news to my family like now you need to get married people are forcing me to get married people who are really trying so hard to get me married because they're telling me it's hormonal you since your breast cancer is hormonal if you get married and you give birth to a child it will disappear You know that's what they were saying but Allah ya Allah I don't know I cannot do things because I'm about you know even if I was about to die if I don't get married I don't want to get married please don't force me okay and those are the times you find yourself you're getting married in a desperate situation and then you end up in you can pray to Allah Allah is Allah is uh, al muiz he can he can change your you know like your like your fate you have to just believe in him and pray to him so I don't want to put myself in a situation where I'm just getting married just to, you know to get rid of my breast cancer who knows if it will come back or not you know so i really didn't like that that energy you know people are like oh you need to find a husband even eh, so people are saying just go look for a husband get a baby and just ditch the husband <laughs> i got suggestions from all kinds i was just listening i was like wow <laughs> i i appreciate that you care about me but this is not how it's going to work you know no i i really don't care if i die tomorrow so like i'm afraid of death anyway I am not if I was to die tomorrow that's what Allah has willed for me I could die the next minute I could die while I'm very healthy walking or in my sleep so it doesn't that that doesn't so that looks like a very temporary uh, solution at some point I was about to actually I was I was really buying the idea of just looking for a man to get a child and khalas that was the end of it which you can do there's nothing actually wrong with that as long as you do it halal like you get married and you know you can get into an agreement i don't think there's a problem with that but do i want to do it that's the question i was like nope i don't need that uh, stress in my life because again some of the for me personally i believe yes it was allah who gave me the disease but also it was brought about by so much stress in my life apart from the hormones if the doctor says it's a hormon- hormonal uh, breast cancer but then also too much stress in my life could have contributed to it so i just need to reduce stress and chill out you know so yeah that was the like the tidbits i forgot in the story that you know people are you know first of all the the breast cancer was hormonal and then the the the, the family and extended friends my schoolmates my everybody even the taxi driver i remember one of my taxi drivers was like ah, i'm going to look for you a husband i'm like relax bro relax <laughs> relax relax chill you know so yeah and it's been i think one year now one year or one year and a half i'm not sure i even lost track of time honestly so yeah guys that was the breast cancer journey and alhamdulillah i think it's been one year or one year and a half i'm not sure but i need to go for checkup so last time i was in kenya i was supposed to go for checkup but i didn't go for checkup because i didn't find uh, the, the right you know like i didn't find the proper time to go i was i don't know what world i was in but i remember i called the doctor i was like i'm coming but i, I didn't completely find the time because i was in kenya i think for a short period of time But yeah, I'm going to go for check up here in Istanbul inshallah. I'm just trying to look for the best hospital or like a nice hospital, a decent hospital. 
So I'll go for the checkup here and I'm 100% inshallah when I'm going for that checkup, I'll tag you along uh, just to know uh, the update. I don't even know what's going on. So the doctors, remember when I told you guys, Dr. Waweru said, yeah, me, you don't need to take any medication after here. But Professor Wasike, he said you need to take tamoxifen for five years. So I started taking it, but then it gave me hot flashes. I was like, I'm not doing this. I am out, you know. I don't know, but when I went to the oncologist, the two oncologists, there was a Muslim oncologist and Dr. Waweru. They both sat down and, and decided that I don't need to take the, the tamoxifen. But then Dr. Dr. Uh, Professor Wasike was saying, you need to take the tamoxifen because I really like you. Remember, he likes me. And he's like, I don't want you to come back here after five years. And it's a different story. So that lingers at the back of my mind every time. I'm, re I'm thinking, do I need to take the tamoxifen? The tamoxifen makes me like have hot flashes like crazy. So... I don't know. I took it for one year, then I quit. I was like, I'm letting it to God. God, I, I don't want... <laughs> I just need to avoid, you know, like, uh, stress, sleep. I need to, you know, avoid sugar, wheat, and junk food and stuff like that. I'll be okay. And maybe, you know, get into now herbal stuff, you know? Like, I take, nowadays, I take this uh, sour soap tea. Sour soap is matomoko, apparently. Do you know, I grew up in the coast, and we used to have matomoko. And to learn from TikTok that actually that matomoko is a medicine for... Uh, breast cancer is wild because I remember I used to steal from my neighbor. I used to the matomoko. I don't know if, how to say matomoko in Turkish, but I don't know if sour soap is matomoko. But there's a tea bag called sour soap, but it's from matomoko, the fruit. I don't know what matomoko is in English. If you know, you can put it in the comment section. But yeah, guys, I was surprised that things that I grew up with in 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 Mariakani matomoko. I remember I used to steal from my neighbor's uh, like shamba. Like she had she had trees of matomoko. I used to jump over the fence and go and steal them. Only to come and realize it's medicine. Now when I go to Kenya, Charles, that's what I'm gonna be eating a lot. So I just need to check my diet, check my stress level, my sleep, and inshallah I'll be okay. And lastly, before I end this vlog, I really want to appreciate all the duas. I wasn't able to respond to the last uh, video because I had flu. I still have flu. I'm recovering. I had the worst flu. I feel like it's COVID. I was so sick beginning of Ramadan until now. This is today's, I think, day four. I don't know. But yeah, I I was sick and I couldn't be able to respond to your messages. But I saw, I read your messages and you guys made dua for me. I really appreciate uh, your duas and I'm glad to take you along this journey so that you can find out later inshallah when I go for the therapy and I, as I mentioned from the first video the main reason I'm sharing this video is for you guys to take care of your health you need, especially the women also the men but most of majority of my followers are women so I really want you guys to take this of this uh, videos as a sign for you to go and do check up and if you if your body is telling you something listen to it you know take care of yourself I really hope uh, you've learned something from these videos and inshallah I'll keep sharing uh, my stories. Also wanted to ex to ask you to excuse the background. Tomorrow I'm traveling, so inshallah I'll tell you guys where I'm going to. And yeah, guys, I really hope uh, this video was beneficial for you. And thank you so much for all the love, the support, the everything. Inshallah, I'll see you in my next video. Thank you so much.